So recently I've seen a lot of videos on product videography and although I don't film these often, I do find them challenging in their own unique ways as no two product videos are the same. So to piggyback off of Daniel Schiffer, Peter McKinnon, and Landon by the way, here are my five tips to creating better product videos. Also I will have links to all the products I mentioned in the description below, so if you're interested be sure to check those out. My first tip is setting the scene. Play around with different materials and props to help create a vibe with the product you're filming. If it's workout supplements, add some weights, shaker cups, protein powder, pretty much anything that can help sell the product but is also relevant. For the Iron Muscle shoot, I started with a sheet of plexiglass that you can get from almost any hardware store and I spray painted the backside black. This is how I was able to achieve that really nice reflection. The reflection in my opinion just adds so much value to the shots and the glass and spray paint together cost about 40 bucks so it's definitely worth it if you can spare the investment. Other than that, I used strawberries and pineapples as those were the flavors used in the products. You can also get creative with this by doing different things like using glycerin, using water, spraying the bottles, spraying the fruit, spraying different props, just having fun trying to create an atmosphere and a vibe for the products that you're filming. I don't know why, but I like saying create a vibe for the products because honestly, when you're filming workout supplements or you're filming a, a shaker cup or whatever it is that you're creating a product video for, you wanna create almost this atmosphere that the product lives in that you're gonna be filming so that when you actually put all those shots together, it's kind of in a way telling a story, setting the mood, just different things like that to get creative. I feel like creating that vibe and that world, that atmosphere is really what's gonna help set your production to the next level. Another thing that you can do is experiment with different backgrounds. Don't always shoot into darkness. At Home Depot, I actually picked up a couple sheets of paneling. I have an all white one. I have like this nice like hardwood flooring looking one. The desk that I actually use is another nice background. Just try to get creative. You don't always have to make them all look the same or do the same things, but try to find things that actually fit the products that you're going to be filming. My second tip is lighting. After the scene has been established, you want to now figure out what is the best ways to light the product. I think everyone that's done a video has expressed the importance of lighting simply because different products can be more or less challenging to light accurately and minimize reflections. For 90% of my product videos, including the product B-roll that's used right here on the channel, I use a Godox SL60W overhead light with a 28 inch softbox. This is usually all the light I need to illuminate the product I'm filming and after this I play with different lighting in the background to create a different look and a different mood. The Aperture MC RGB lights have been my go-to for adding color to the shots. They're small, lightweight, magnetic, you can pretty much put these things in any spot of your table to create a, a color cast and make your shots really look more pleasing. These are also perfect for adding that side light to help create a sense of depth. I also like to use these lights to do reveal shots where the product is moving in silhouette and then you bring the light in and kind of fades in and shows the label or something like that. Another light I used was the Kane TV Boltzen 150W RGB light. I'll do a separate review of this, but it's a really nice light that's very powerful and has tons of different modes built into it. I set it to a party mode and just flashed it at the back side of the table and it literally created this really nice like colored, almost changing color background that looked like something I did in post, but it was actually done in camera. Keep in mind that if you're gonna use RGB lights, be intentional. Use colors that are either in the product or contrasting colors to help add value and punch to the shots. Honestly, just ensure you have the product clearly lit, then you can get creative with additional lighting and having fun with it. My third tip, and to me the most important, is depth. This is the easiest way to level up any type of product, photo, or video. Filming a product that falls off into darkness is great, but for a product video, it can only be so entertaining for so long. With the Iron Muscle supplements, I added strawberries in the foreground on top of a turntable so that it not only created depth, but it added motion to the shot. For the fat burner close up, I added pills in the background again, adding depth and making the shot interesting. You can get so creative with this and just have fun with it because having that depth of field really adds a different element to the photo or the video. If you don't have a turntable or anything like that, you can also get by with just 
holding the products or holding the props and just kind of holding it near the lens in the front element while the product is actually in focus. That way you're still creating that depth and you're using it to almost block part of the frame. I think almost all the shots I used in the Iron Muscle video had some sort of foreground or background element. And again, it just really made those shots even more pleasing to look at. Another thing I like to do to create some sort of depth is using haze. I love haze. It just adds this mood and this tone that really looks good on camera, especially when you slow it down. Haze doesn't always work and you definitely don't want to overuse it, but one or two shots from time to time can really add some flair to the video. I got a haze machine off Amazon for about 60 bucks and has been one of my favorite tools to use in any product photo or video. My fourth tip is motion. I personally use the Rhino slider and the Arc 2, but you can get by with just about anything or even shooting handheld to get some motion. I love the Rhino system because I can get repeated shots and do things slightly different while the camera is moving continuously. I got the blood dripping shot by starting the slider close and angled down, then sliding back and panning up to show the product. Shots like this would be rather difficult or impossible to get without some sort of system like this, but again, you can still achieve various looks handheld. A good buddy of mine actually shot an entire product video handheld, and I kid you not, some of them really looked like slider shots. One of the hacks he told me he did was he used a towel and placed his hand on top of the towel and then slid back on the glass, and it really created a nice, smooth effect. I'd imagine adding a little bit of warp stabilizer to that in post, and boom, you've got yourself a slide-looking shot. Other ways you can create motion is opening the product, throwing things into the frame, adding something, doing something to make things move in the shot. Keep in mind you're filming stationary products, so to make it interesting for longer, you've got to do things to continue to build that value while also pulling the viewer in. A static stationary shot just gets boring after a while. Adding a little bit of movement, whether the product is moving or you're adding foreground elements that move, just gives the viewer something new to look at. Even though they're watching the same thing, it just looks new, looks appealing, and it's something they wanna continue to watch. So don't rely on gear. You can get creative, but it just may take some extra time and patience to do so. And my last tip is shot variety. Close-ups, wide shots, group shots, shots with the props, shots without the props, basically anything to create a sense of change within your shots. I personally get three common types with every product, details, wide, and creative. My detail shots are usually used to show the product name, a cool graphic, flavor, or anything that's interesting and worth getting extra detail of. I wish for these I had a macro lens, but for now I use the Tamron 28 to 75 in manual focus with an aperture of four or higher to get more of the product in focus. This works, but honestly, if you have a macro lens, then definitely use that because it can get insane details and clarity that traditional lenses just can't get. Wide shots basically speak for themselves, just getting the entire item in the frame if possible, while also adding some type of creative aspect or spin to it, whether it's haze in the background or pulling it forward using a string, it's just different ways you can get creative with the wide shots. Creative shots are the ones where I really like to have fun and take my time on. One creative shot I did in the muscle nutrition one was the blood pouring over the container of bloodgasm. Yeah, that's the name of it, bloodgasm. We poured blood over the top of the bloodgasm and created this blood dripping effect on the container which looked insanely cool in camera. And in post, we actually reversed that clip to make the blood go up the container and reveal the name of the product, which I personally think looked incredible. Creative shots aren't something you would use more than once in the sequence, but they're definitely a shot that you wanna put in there, but don't overuse the creative shots. You still wanna make the product clear and visible, and you don't wanna take away from what it is you're trying to sell, but you do wanna add some flair and some pop to it just to give the viewer something really cool to look at. Another shot worth noting is the final here it is shot. I try to make this the best and most interesting shot that lingers a bit and shows the viewer everything that was a part of this video, whether it was one supplement or a group of supplements, all together with some room for the logo or something like that. This shot is usually a wide shot that has everything strategically placed, a little bit of foreground elements, zooming in, or some sort of motion to really just kind of make you go, okay, this is the product, this is what I just watched, wow, I'm interested, let me buy it. And that's it, five tips to hopefully help you level up your product videography. 
I wanna do a second video that goes over five tips for editing better product videos because I feel like a lot of the magic really happens in post. You can really make or break a product video with a shot lingering too long or the wrong song or not cutting it together well. There's a lot of little things that I personally do that I feel like could also be beneficial to you, especially if you're looking into getting started making product videos. But that's it. If you found this video helpful and felt like you've learned something, consider hitting that thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them all. Thanks again, and I will see y'all in the next one.